Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we're making this super quick and super easy, super fabulous dishcloth with a built-in scrubby in the center. To make this super great scrubby dishcloth, you need some cotton yarn. I'm using this sugar and cream. I've got a big spool of it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box below. And I'm also using a five millimeter clover hook. You can use whatever hook you have. I love my clovers. I'll also put a link in the description box below. When you're working with these super big spools, I just usually try to keep it on the ground or a little bit lower than me. So it just comes off the spool super easy. So to start, we're just gonna make a slip knot, leaving a really short tail, a little about, maybe about one inch. We're gonna work over it and cut it off so it doesn't have to be a long tail. So, slip knot on the hook and chain three. One, two, three. Put your hook into the first chain that you made and then I hold it open with my thumb and my finger and slip stitch to join and I keep it open there with my thumb and my finger. Chain one, and now we're gonna make six single crochets into that center where I'm holding it open. So six single crochets, and we are working over our tail. To make a single crochet, no wrapping your yarn, you just put your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two. So that is a single crochet. So that's three, one, two, three. We don't count that chain we did in the beginning. That was just to get our height. So there's four, five, and six. And we're gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet. So not that little chain, but our first single crochet. You can also count back your stitches, which are these V's on the top. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's the first full size stitch on the top of that ring. So we're gonna slip stitch underneath both strands. So slip stitch to join and chain three. One, two, three. Now wrap your yarn and we're going to make four double crochets into that first stitch right where we slip stitched. So again underneath both strands of the V and we're going to make four double crochets for a total of five. Our chain counts as a double crochet. So to make a double crochet wrap your yarn, put it into the stitch, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. So we're going to do that two more times for a total of five, including our chain. So there is five double crochets. And we're gonna make a popcorn stitch for our center flower, which is our scrubby. So pull your hook up and make a big loop. Doesn't have to be that big, but you'll get the hang of it. And now go back, one, two, three, four, five. So into the top of the chain three, Put your hook in, put that loop back on your hook and make it small again and slip stitch. So just bring it through that stitch you just made and now chain two. One, two. So that's your first popcorn. Now wrap your yarn. We're going to do a popcorn in, into each of these stitches for a total of six. So five double crochets, one into each of these stitches. one popcorn into each stitch, like that, and pull up your, the, top, the loop of your fifth double crochet, your last one, and go into the first double crochet that you made, and put that loop back on your hook, shrink it down, pull it through, and chain two, one, two. So that's our first two popcorns we've made. We have to do four more. So our next one is right here. Five double crochets. One, two, three, 
two, three, four, and five. Pull your loop up, take your hook out and put it into the top of your first double crochet. Put that loop back on your hook and shrink it down. Pull it through and chain two. One, two. So that's how we're doing our popcorns for the entire pattern. So we've done three, so we're gonna do three more on this side. So now we have done four popcorns and you'll kind of see on your work, it looks like you have three stitches left, but this first one here, that's not a stitch. We went in right after it. That's part of our join. So we're just gonna work into these next two popcorns or these next two stitches to make a popcorn. So finish those two and I'll meet you back. So there's my last five double crochets. So I'm just gonna turn that into a popcorn. So put your loop, make a big loop, hook out, hook into your first, loop back on your hook, shrink it down, pull it through, chain two like you always would, and just make sure you have six. And we're gonna ignore that, because that's not really a stitch. That's our slit, that's our chain one. And flip your work over to the back side of your popcorns, and you'll see this first stitch way over here. This stitch over here, it's your first chain, how we closed up this popcorn. So we're gonna slip stitch way over there. So it looks like it's really far, but that's where we're gonna go. So regular loop on your hook, get you some tension, and get your hook underneath both strands of that stitch over there, and slip stitch to join, like that. So see, now all of our popcorns are the same all the way around. Now we're gonna do our chain three to get our height, one, two, three. And we're gonna make two popcorns in between each of these popcorns of the previous round. So it's a bit tight, there's a lot of stitches to get in there. And our chain three counts as our first double crochet, so we're gonna do four double crochets. One, two, oop. two, three, and four, counting our chain, that's five. Loop up into the top of the chain three, loop on the hook, and cinch it through. Chain two, like always. So there's always a chain two between our popcorns. And you can kind of push those stitches to the side. We want some more space beside that first popcorn. And one more popcorn into the same spot. So five double crochets. One, two, three, four. And when I'm doing them, I'm trying to lay my yarn right in that crack to keep pushing the stitches over. You want them to be side by side. So I'm pulling it and just dragging so you'll get that yarn right in that crack. That's how you get your stitches side by side. So give that one a try. Loop up and hook into the first double crochet, loop back on your hook, cinch it down, slip stitch, well, well, pull it through, and chain two. One, two. So there's two popcorns in between those two previous popcorns, and we're gonna do that in between the next one. So two popcorns in the next space. So now we've done four popcorns. So just keep going around doing two popcorns in between each or into the space between each of the popcorns of the previous round, and I'll meet you when we get back over there. So we've made two popcorns in between each of the previous popcorns for a total of 12. And you want to count to make sure, but if you had six in the beginning and you put two between, you're gonna have your 12. So do your regular po last popcorn with a chain two, and you're gonna slip stitch way over to that first chain you made on the other side. It seems really far away, but just slip stitch to that chain, a small slip stitch, so get some tension on your hook, like that. So that's closed up, 
and chain three. One, two, three. Into that space, two double crochets. One and two. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet. So there's our first shell. Shells are usually sets of three double crochet, and they are in this case also. So in the next space, three double crochets. One, two, three. And into the next space, the same thing. One, two, and three. And into the next space, we're going to do a corner. So corners are three double crochets. One. Oh, my yarn. There we go. Two. Three double crochets. And a chain two. And three double crochets. One. All into the same spot. And you might even want to push your stitches back. So you have space along that chain to make your double crochets. Like that. So that has made a corner. So the pattern for this is corner and then two sides and then corner. So we're, for the sides is just three double crochets. So we're going to do that twice. So two regular shells. This is our first regular shell and again three double crochets in the next space one two three and then in the next one we're doing a corner so three double crochets and try to keep these ones over on the side I kind of pull my yarn to the side so they stay stacked up side by side so there's three chain two to get around the corner and three more double crochets into the very same spot. One, two, three. So there is our first side that's finished. So there's our corner over here and then a side, a side and another corner. So t corner, side, side, corner. So we're going to do that all the way around this round and I'll see you at the end. And now into this space, it's a bit weird because we chained straight from on top. We could have slip stitched over, probably should have. But into this next space, we're finishing this corner. So that is three double crochets and a chain, well, three double crochets and a join. So one, two and I'm putting my stitches way over on this side I'm doing them before that chain like that and now to do our join chain one and then single crochet to that chain to join so we want to get into the chain bring it back so two loops on your hook and now wrap your yarn and take off two. So you did your single crochet. And that kind of leaves us in the center of that corner spot. So chain three, one, two, three. And we're not going to turn our work. We're just going to keep working from here. So into that same corner spot, kind of on top of that single crochet we made, we're going to put two double crochets. So one and two. So that counts as our shell. Now in between the space of our sets of three double crochets, we're going to put another round of shells. So three double cro crochets over, we put three double crochets. So we're just pretty much doing another round of granny square. And you can do this row, you can repeat this row as many times as you want to get your granny square the size or your dishcloth the size that you'd like it to be. So in between, into the space, three double crochets all the way along each side and I'll show you what to do at the corners. In the corners, we do another corner exactly the same as, as we did below. So three double crochets, one, two, three. 
two, three, chain two, and three more double crochets. And you can pull your stitches over if you need more space. Just kind of pinch them and grab your chain to get some more space along that side. You want them side by side. So there's your corner. And then you're building a shell in between each of the shells of the previous round. So keep going like this all the way around. I'll meet you at the join. So we've worked our way all the way around. We're ready to join. And you can see that it's made itself into a square just by putting our corners on top of corners. So that was super easy. We're going to join the same way by doing a chain one and then so into the top of the chain three, you want to go into the chain, two loops on your hook, bring your yarn back, wrap your yarn and take off two. So there's your single crochet join. Now we're going to be doing a round of just one double crochet into each double crochet plus our corners. So chain three, that counts as your first double crochet. And then wiggle your fingers in there to get that corner spot open. You don't want to go in past the chain three of the previous. You want to make sure you're before it on top of that single crochet you just made and two more double crochets or two double crochets into that corner space like that and now one into each stitch going all the way along I skip the first double crochet just so it works out better for the next row so I just start by going into this first actual double crochet. I ignore the chain. So into that one and we're going to be working into the stitch so straight through the V to get two loops on your hook and one double crochet into each double crochet going all the way along to the corner. So one into one and I will meet you at the corner. So that's your last double crochet into your last double crochet of the previous round. Now we're at the corner. It looks like we're jumping over, but that's just normal. That's how it's supposed to look. So into our corner, we're going to do a corner. So the same thing is three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. Two, three. Push them back to get yourself some more space. Chain two and three double crochets. One, two, three. Now we're going to work all the way back along this side and all the way along the last side doing the exact same thing and I'm skipping this first uh, double crochet. Technically that's your first stitch. You'd push your stitches back and work into that one but I'm ignoring it so our count stays nice for the next round. So just go along skipping that first double crochet and working into each of the double crochets to the corner. Corners are three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet and I'll meet you at the join. When we get to the corner we're just going to finish our corner so three double crochets one, two, and three so back at the join, we're going to join the same way, so chain one and then put your hook into the chain three from your chain, the third chain up on your chain and single crochet. And now we're going to do a pico for our loop. So instead of doing a regular pico, which is a chain three, we're going to do, I did a chain nine. So this is a chain nine. Just think where you're going to be hanging your dishcloth and make it big enough to get over your hook. But I have a small hook, so I'm making just a chain nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then put, bring your hook down and you're going to slide it into that stitch, the one at the bottom, and pick up both of those strands. So the one at the top and the one on the side. And now get yourself arranged and you're going to slip stitch. So bring it through and now turn your hook to get it through that last one. And into the same corner spot, single crochet. 
So that is single crochet, chain nine, slip, put it together like a pico, and another single crochet. So that gets your loop ready to go. So that's finished, you don't have to think about it anymore. Now you're going to chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, and single crochet into the third. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the third. So you're going to do this all the way along the side. Skip two, single crochet into the third. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the third. So I'll meet you at the end of this row. So if we skip two, we land right in the corner, which is what we want. So single crochet, and now we're going to do a pico. So that's just a chain three, one, two, three. So slide your hook into that to grab the first strand and the one along the side. So two strands and slip stitch to finish your pico. And I turn my hook to get it through all of that. And into the same corner spot, single crochet. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the third. So you're going to work your way around your entire square this way, or your, your dishcloth. And I'll meet you back at the join. So getting close to the corner, just finish it the same way. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the corner space. and slip stitch to join. So I'm just gonna find something down there underneath that loop we made. And it's a bit tight, but that's good. I just want two loops on my hook and I don't care what two loops they are. I want that guy, that looks great. And I want one more. That's part of the chain, I want one below it. There, that guy. Ugh. Okay, there's my two loops and slip stitch to join and chain one to make a knot on your yarn get your scissors cut your yarn, leave enough yarn to sew in and hook up yarn through and snug that down so there is our dishcloth so this chain we made keeps the dishcloth from stretching out because the chains don't stretch so that, whole, that helps it keep its shape. And these picots on the corners are really good for like getting into little cracks and crevices of your dishes in case you needed that. So now we just have to sew in our tail. I'll do that at the end of the video for people who want to know what to do with their tail. Because I remember when I started crocheting, I didn't know what to do with it. So I'll be showing you how I do it at the end. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. I'd love to see your dish claws that you make. You can uh, put them on our Facebook group, which is Secret Yarnery Crochet Community. Um, I'll put a the link is in the description box below if you scroll down everything. And uh, also, we're also on Ravelry if you are on Ravelry and not Facebook. So thank you guys so much for watching and have a super great day. Stay hooked. Now, if you're wondering what to do with that tail, just grab your needle and thread it. I thread mine like that, but usually I don't let go. <laughs> and we're gonna work it down to underneath this corner. I'd like to put my ends underneath where all, my, all those stitches are, because you could just go back and forth a couple times, and it's secure, and it's really hidden because there's so many stitches in one area. So, any which way, you've got to start getting it down. So, stitch it down. You don't want to totally go in a straight line, because it can stretch back out. So you want to go in a couple different directions. So I just follow the yarn my stitches and try to kind of get it inside down towards the center and make sure you're not pulling too tight you don't want it you don't want to mess up your tension so pull it through to one side of those doubles and now I'm going to grab a strand of yarn that's going in a different direction a little crossbar down there And now wiggle it back through underneath all those doubles. That's in the fat part. 
and pull that through. You want it tight but not crazy tight. And if you want to be super sure, grab another strand, I've been going in a different direction. Go under it to grab it and then put it back against the way you just came. So now you've looped back along yourself. So if you stretch your dishcloth or whatever work you're doing, your end is not going to wiggle out. And cut your yarn. And your dishcloth is finished. That's awesome. Stay hooked.